First, I'm just gonna give you a quick update of the Sprouted Greens Working Group, which is an initiative that the Whole Greens Council oversaw um, from 2015 to 2017. So because sprouted greens are so popular with consumers, but because there has not been an official regulation or definition for what counts as a sprouted grain, what we did is we held conference calls, phone interviews, and emails with 47 different people from 28 different companies to kind of assess, you know, what are people doing? What are the common practices to see what we could learn? And our hope was to really establish some best practices. Um, admittedly, uh, our conversations led to more questions than answers, um, but I'm gonna share those findings with you today. Um, so first, uh, a lot of our Sprouted Grain Working Group members um, thought it was really important to remind everyone that not all grains do sprout. Um, this could be because the grains are older or because they've been dried out too much or because some grains have been bred to resist field sprouting, which in turn can sometimes make them resist intentional sprouting as well. And um, our members really um, thought it was important to be able to test uh, the viability of the seed uh, because otherwise companies could compete unfairly by buying a cheaper um, dead seed and then just soaking it and drying it out and calling it sprouted. And then um, I also wanna point out that we are talking about intentional sprouting, um, not accidental field sprouting. Uh, we don't wanna make anyone sick, uh, so this does need to be done in a in controlled environment. So based on all of our conversations with our Sprouted Grain Working Group members, we found that there were a lot of different approaches to uh, determining if a grain was sprouted or not. Um, and although time, temperature, and moisture are all required for the sprouting process to occur, a lot of our members really um, cautioned against using moisture alone um, to document sprouting, and they really encouraged there to be some other validation method. Um, so not a single one of these is the best or the one way to go. Um, these were just simply the four most common um, ways that emerged. And it's really too soon at this point in time to say that one approach is better for every single company at every point in time. Um, but this is just kind of a peek at some of the creative ways that people are trying to address this. So the first way to tell if a grain has sprouted is if you can see a sprout on it. Um, I think some people um, think that, you know, that might be the only way, but in fact, a grain could be sprouted even if you don't see a sprout um, because the sprout could have fallen off during the drying process. Um, also, uh, different grains in the same batch can sprout at different rates um, under the same conditions. And then there are some whole grains that are just so small in size, so like amaranth and things like that, that to, um, you know, it's just really difficult to actually see visibly. Um, so there are also a lot of questions that still need to be answered. Um, for example, you know, should you, it, you be able to see the sprout um, with your naked eye or should it be with magnification? And um, how do we address, you know, if certain grains in the batch are sprouted and certain grains in the batch have not shown a visible sprout? Um, so still definitely need some work to do here, uh, but it's definitely uh, an interesting uh, take on it. One really common way that came about was alpha amylase. So when a grain sprouts, the alpha amylase converts the starch into sugar. And so sprouted grains tend to have higher levels of alpha amylase. Companies who sprout wheat often use the falling number test to determine this. A few companies have told us that they've used falling number on other grains as well. 
but the percentages really vary. So we can't stand up here and say that it needs to be a certain percent change. Um, it kind of depends on the type of wheat and even the conditions. Other uh, members of our Sprouted Grains Working Group suggested RVA um, because you can set different parameters for that test. Uh, but from what we understand, it's uh, quite expensive technology. So it's not um, the best solution for every single company at this point in time. And, uh, but it certainly shows promise. The third way is uh, amino acid increase. So we see this most often in rice. Uh, most often GABA is what's measured. Um, some of our sprouted grain working group members have experimented with using this in other grains besides rice. Um, so this could be an option for some companies also to demonstrate that their grain has sprouted. And then the fourth uh, common method was a uh, phytase increase. Um, so when grains sprout, um, phytase can break down some of the phytates. So sprouted grains tend to have uh, higher levels of phytase. Um, but this can be impacted by, you know, the, um, the soaking time and the different grains. So again, we're not ready to say that a certain percent um, you know, is the benchmark across all grains. So um, the Sprouted Grains Working Group kind of came to a close um, once we had done this initial information gathering stage. And as far as the future, I think what we're really waiting on right now is a little bit more research to be done, um, perhaps setting benchmarks across the different grains, um, or perhaps some more ambitious studies. Um, I mean, they could be difficult to fund, but you know, being able to compare a lot of the different grains across standard times and temperatures and soaking uh, methods so that we can really figure out the best way um, to set best practices. So for those of you who would like to learn more about this, I know this is a little bit technical, um, but you can look on pages 30 to 35 of your program book. And there I've included the summary from our Sprouted Grains Working Group, um, which concluded in 2017. And um, certainly you can come find me during the break uh, to learn more about future opportunities. Um, but I will now turn it over to Carly because she can tell you a little bit about what we're working on right now and what we do know currently. <laughs> 